Wrapping up some final details on the roof framing here. The last uh, thing we did was get these rafter tails installed. What we've got here is uh, two by six full dimension rough sawn cedar that's been primed and that will actually be the exposed rafter tails. The reason I use those is partly just um, to match the age of the house. Um, it was this house was originally framed with two by six uh, full dimension oak. So give it that look and also um, because cedar is so great at holding paint it really is a low maintenance solution. I've got some cedar siding on my house. I just repainted it after 20 years and it was still the paint job was still in really good shape. It was it was faded from the sun but it still was perfectly adhered to the siding, uh, no cracks, no flakes. It, it really is um, outstanding product as far as paintability and stability goes. So I'm using a lot of cedar on this house and what we've got is these two by six full dimensions for the rafter tails and then we've got two by 10 barge rafters on the end there. So the first step was to get a string across there that is the same dimension from the top plate, same distance from the top plate all the way along. So it's nice and square and then also get it level. And really the, the, the leveling process is mostly about adjusting the barge rafter so that it matches up the other end uh, exactly height wise. These are cantilevered, these um, rafter tails. So it's the uh, the one to two ratio. So for every bit that's exposed, you have to have two times that length uh, not exposed. So we've got about a one foot overhang here. So the, these are three feet long, one foot overhang, and then two feet on the, the part that's sistered to the common rafter. And these are attached with these heavy duty GRK uh, three and an eighth by, they're not quite a quarter, so no, maybe, maybe they are a quarter inch, yeah, probably a quarter inch by three and an eighth. And these are great for cedar because they've got a big head on them. It's kind of a soft wood, so uh, you can really you can really uh, pull them up tight to the common rafter with these things. So I've got all these on on both sides. And when, when, when we're ready to sheathe the roof, these, um, these rafter tails would drop down a little bit below the common. So when we're ready to sheathe the roof, before we do that, we'll put this tongue and groove on all the overhangs. All the eaves and the gable ends will have this tongue and groove cedar under the sheathing. And then the sheathing will go all across the overhang and actually get screwed into the edge of the fascia. So we're doing 5 8 sheathing, so that will give us a really good, strong bond that will make that overhang that much stronger. So let's take a walk outside, show the finished product on another section of the house and get a view of of what this looks like from the outside. So this section was built quite a while ago, but the technique is the same. So this will give you a good idea of what it looks like when it's done. So that tongue and groove cedar goes, it's just on the overhangs and then the rest of the roof is sheathed with 5 8 plywood and the plywood extends over the edge and it's screwed into that fascia. So in, in addition to those rafter tails holding up that overhang, we've got a lot of plywood also adding strength to it. This is kind of a, the way this, a style that this house uses all the way around. All the overhangs, both the 
eaves and the gable ends use this technique. So let's walk around back here and see how it looks from the outside. So there's our 2x10 barge rafter. Still got a couple of permanent lookout rafters on there, but it's still kind of just tacked up there. It's very securely attached to the ridge, so it's, it's not going anywhere. And then we've got our rafter tails. So the final step before we finish up the framing is put a level on all those tails and on the barge and cut that vertical line. So it'll end up looking like all the other parts of the house, like this porch right here. Let's get a long shot here. So that was the last really big piece of the reframing getting pretty close now another week or so and we can start putting some plywood on this and get the roof underlayment down and then it will be well it will be structurally complete so this is the last other than the front porch which doesn't have an intersecting roof this is the last piece of the puzzle uh, before I can put the shingles on so it'll be a big milestone and we're getting close so see you next time